I'd like to talk a little bit this morning about blessings, and we're going to get into that. I read this story I want to share with you guys this morning, okay? Here's what I read and what I found. A man and a woman in their 50s are out to dinner. The wife asked, Honey, when I die, would you ever remarry? The husband replies, I might, but only if I had your blessing. The wife says, Of course, my love. But would you let her drive my prize Mercedes? The man reassures her and says, No, I'd never let another woman drive your beloved car. I'd rather sell it outright. The wife smiles and says, And don't let her use my golf clubs either. To which the man replies, Oh, I won't. She's left-handed. <laughs> oh, that sounds like trouble, doesn't it? That sounds like trouble. Stand in your feet, if you will, this morning, and let's be in reverence of God's Word. Would you do that for me this morning? Let us all stand and open your Bibles today. I've had one passage of Scripture. It's already been asked of me this morning where we're going to be going today. And uh, it's going to be out of Proverbs chapter 20. I, uh, I know that when... Uh, Different ones speak at different times. Us as ministers, we go different directions, and sometimes we have those real lengthy sermons, and sometimes they're little short ones. And uh, I'm not a, I'm not a, against having a real short sermon. I picked this morning a real short scripture here as well, but it'll definitely get the job done for us today. Proverbs chapter 20. I have one verse of scripture, and, and I might not just add while I'm here. I love the book of Proverbs. I, uh, sometime back in uh, early on in life, I, I come across the book of Proverbs. And, and for me, I'm kind of, uh, I don't know, I'm just of that personality. I, it doesn't take a whole bunch of lengthy words to get to something for me. I like to hear things short, quick, right to the punch. And essentially, that's what the book of Proverbs can do for us, you know? We can go to the book of Proverbs. I think there's 31 chapters at the most in the book of Proverbs. If you look and research, you would find at the most in each chapter, at the most in its length, there are only 31 verses in each chapter. You will find them more than that. Uh, uh, and then these chapters and these verses, uh, they kind of get right to it. And most of these Proverbs were attributed to King Solomon. History tells us, and uh, certainly in 1 Kings, uh, I forget where exactly where it's set, but history in First King uh, lets us informs us that King Solomon is is attributed to having written over three thousand proverbs. Man, that's a lot of writings, idioms to put together. And we know here this morning that a proverb is not an absolute. A proverb in itself is a faithful, truthful saying that is more times than not, right? It's something that's likely to happen more times than it not happening. That's what is meant by a proverb. So when we read the book of Proverbs, uh, the things that it is suggesting and saying to us is just that. More times than not, this is the way it's going to turn out. So Proverbs chapter 20, verse 7 today, I have selected. And I would like to read that verse of Scripture for you um, as we move forward today. The just man walketh in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we're so thankful yet again for another opportunity, Lord, to be able to assemble together. Lord, we're so thankful that as of today, we live in a country of freedom, Lord, where we can do such things. And, and we just glory in that. And we're so thankful for it. And Lord, we pray now, Lord, for the uh, word, Lord, for the words to, uh, to be said, Lord, that we be here today in encouragement to one another. Strengthen ourselves, Lord God, and helping us to be better, Lord God, and let each of us be better examples, Lord God, as we go from here today. In Jesus' name we pray. Would everyone say with me, Amen. 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 Please be seated if you will. Now I know time, time doesn't stop. 
but the clock does sometimes. Someone told me one of the clocks was out today, but I, I, uh, I have a clock here as well, and, and I'm going to be cognizant of it and, and try to make sure that we move right along and get out of here. But coming from the book of Proverbs 20 and 7 today is where the scripture uh, where the message comes from. I reflected back here some time back ago. On Tuesday, July 9th of 2019, I asked of my daddy, I said, in the last moment of your life, and I'm talking about our earthly life, our eternal life, but in the last moment of your life, what will matter most? I mean, what goes through our mind? Cars we own, years at the pastorate, buildings with our name, positions held. What goes through the mind? So I asked my father, I said, when it comes up to the last moment of your life, what will matter most? And he paused. And as my father paused, I shared with him my answer. My answer was my children. When I get to the point in life when I'm approaching my end, uh, this way, I, I, I just believe in my heart of hearts what's going to be on my mind is my children. And I can say that with so much assurance because it's so much on my mind today, Brother Scott. My children. I mean, I, my children. Uh, and it's not that that's the correct answer for all of us, but for me, uh, it's my kids and my children and my grandchildren. I miss Miss Sandra. She's not able to be here today. I wish she was. Because she's got some beautiful great grands. She, she sure does. But I love family. I love my family. And you know, right after God, right after the Lord, uh, as my priority in life, Matthew 6, 33, right after my relationship with my Lord, it's my family. Um, so without hesitation, when I get to the end of my life, what's going to be most important to me in my mind, where my mind is going to be, or it's going to be on where it's at today, which is my children. For me, nothing matters more now, and nothing's going to matter more then than will my family. Um, you know, I drove up here today on Mustangs. Some of you may have seen that, and some of you may know me. Uh, I've had any history with those Mustangs. I love old Mustangs. I, 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 I've uh, had several of them, and uh, throughout life, and my kids, and I built relationships, and uh, we put together a Dillon County car show for 19 years. We've been working it, and it's just for the love of the cars and enjoyment, general wholesome thing you can do. But at the last of my life, I'm telling you, my mind's not going to be on cars. No, sir. That's not going to be on cars. My mind's going to be on my children. Uh, uh, when I come up to the end of the way, I mean, there's things that I've done. Uh, uh, Proverbs, uh, I'm reading today out of the book, book of Proverbs. Some 25, 30 years ago, I started pinning little idioms myself, and, and they've accumulated. And, and be quite honest, we just... Uh, looking back on it, it's amazing how many things that I've noted down. Some of you follow me maybe on Facebook, and you follow and see some of the postings that I post. And uh, it's been quite extensive. And uh, But I will say, when I come up to the end of the way, I'm telling you today, nothing in literature, nothing's going to matter to me in my mind of anything that I've done as it pertains to uh, uh, cars and vehicles, as it pertains to literature and things I've written. Uh, and it's not going to be, be that. For me, it's going to be on my children. I love my children. My children are a priority of my life. It's not about the books I publish. It's not about anything in this life or anything else for me. And I'm not talking about you or the, or the next person. I'm just talking about me today. For me, my girls are everything. My family is everything next to Christ in my life. Uh, the charities that I participated in, and my wife and I, we, we've attributed, uh, uh, helped in over the years. And, and still do, and the things I've seen, and nothing in this world, I believe, when I get to the end of my way, is going to matter. The thing that's going to be on my mind is my babies. 
my children. And they, they always are babies because they, 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 huh? she never grows up, does she? Miss Layla's baby here on this front pew this morning, that's still her baby. Amen? But for me, it's my children. You see, I will, uh, I want my children to prosper. I will. I want them to do well in this world. I want my children to uh, have good careers. And certainly, I, uh, I've done it what I could with my limited resources and abilities to help put them in that direction. Um, getting the three of them educated, they all out working, got jobs, and two of them's got their own family started. I mean, yeah, sure, that's important. Um, I want my children, uh, marriages to be successful. And might I say, I'm quite proud today of, of my children, my two girls that are married. They have two fine young men that they married to. And uh, I'm so thankful for that. I want my children to prosper with their families. I, I uh, Goodness, I, uh, I, I went for years, Brother Scott, and, and, and one child after the next. And, and, you know, every man wants that little boy. I, I believe it's just something natural. I really do. But, um, uh, it didn't work out that way for me. My first one was a little girl. My second one was a little girl. And you know, that third one I had hopes, well, maybe that I'm going to get a son with the third one. Well, it didn't happen. And uh, so after about the third one, my wife said, that's it, boy. That's it. That's it. No more. <laughs> you know, that's it. And it was. But um, uh, So I lived now to be a grandfather, and they sh they're giving me babies out to at the time, they boys. So those boys are coming around. And I love my grands. I love my children. And I'm telling you, you know, there's nothing to take place for me at the end of life's way in my family. <coughs> Everything I do, those things that I don't do, is largely because of my family. I'm thinking of my girls and their future families. I want my children to be strong in their faith, knowing their iniquities are forgiven and covered by the blood of Christ. Amen? Aren't we glad today to know that all the sins in our life, uh, uh, somewhere along life's way, I'm sure there's some of us here today that's been better than others. Uh, you looking at me today, I've probably been worse than most of you. But I'm so thankful today that today that God had sent His Son and died on that cross, shed His blood, the uh, uh, poor, uh, uh, that would cover my sins, that I don't have to worry any longer about my sins and them being held in my account because I accept it through faith and through faith alone, Jesus Christ Christ is my Savior, and I know today I've got it covered through the blood. And I want my children to know that. It's important to me that my kids have that truth in their lives. I want my children to be strong in their faith, having grace to endure sufferings. Because sufferings is going to come. You know, just because we line up and we... Uh, uh, have a profession of faith and we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, that doesn't mean that the sufferings are gone. You know, I hear sometimes some ministers maybe, um, and, and maybe with good intent sometimes, but I, I hear things about, well, if you'll just do this, if you do that right, and you'll pay your tithe, you'll come to church, and you'll be like this, that, and other. The Lord will bless you, and you can be like me. No! No, it doesn't work that way. There was no man that walked the face of the earth that did any more righteousness than did our Lord Jesus Christ. But might I tell you, that man suffered, didn't he? Oh, our Lord suffered on the cross. He, he with no sin, yet they put him up on a cross and they pulled at his beard. They, they get, gave him water to drink that was nothing but vinegar in the end. I'm telling you, a righteous man, and without sin, he suffered. And ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ, can I just say this morning, if no one's, uh, if you just haven't thought about it lately, that some of the greatest blessings of life are our sufferings. It's going to come through sufferings. And when those sufferings come in our life, and we're doing it for the glory of the Lord, and we suffer because of our faith in Jesus Christ, we ought to count it all joy. Lord, I'm telling you, there's joy today when we know that our sufferings today in part is because of our faith in Jesus Christ. Nowhere in the Bible does it tell us sufferings isn't going to come. And I want my children to know that when the sufferings come, they can endure those sufferings. I want my children to be strong in their faith. I want them to have uh, a comfort 
in times of tribulation because problems are going to come. 2 Corinthians 1 and 14, it just amplifies that uh, troubles are going to come. Uh, difficulties are going to come. Misfortunes are going to come. Strains are going to come. Some of us anxieties are going to come. But I want to remind us today, folks, we can get through those times. We can suffer, yes, but we can endure those hard times when they come and have comfort in knowing that the Lord is with us through it all. I uh, I want my children to know that all things work together for the good to those who called according to His purpose, Christ Jesus. I'm saying today that things are going to come in their lives and, and I want them to know that whatever it is they're going through, you know, sometimes when we're going through those storms and challenges in our life, you know, if we're not careful, we can get the mully grooves and we can get down. And, and certainly, uh, as all of us, you know, when we're strained, uh, we call up and cry out to our Father, Jesus, uh, and the Father in Heaven to help us. Certainly we do. Uh, but when those times come and it seems like there's no uh, prayer that seems like it's getting through, and it just makes us feel that way, the comfort that we can find is not in our feelings because our feelings can lead us wrong. But the comfort we can find is right here in Romans 8, 28, where the Bible says all things. It doesn't say good things. It's not saying bad things. It's saying all those things that work together for the good in our lives. And we can find comfort in knowing whatever we're faced with, whatever we're challenged with, that it's working for the good somehow. Come on, somebody. Amen. I want my children to be strong in their faith. I want them to be assured that the saved will be delivered from death. Second Corinthians 1 and 10. Come on, somebody. I, I, I what, had a child uh, up in Virginia <laughs> while suffering with tuberculosis. Twelve years of age wrote a song that maybe most of you here today are familiar with. And the song was Ain't no grave gonna hold my body down. Twelve years old. That twelve-year-old child had to give. He had it figured out that whatever may come, this this sickness, this this cancer in our bodies, this this what we face that that maybe deteriorates us, our bodies away. We got to have faith, and because we have faith in Jesus Christ and have faith in the Word of God, 2 Corinthians 1 and 10, folks, I'm saying today, there ain't no grave. Can I use bad grammar to make a good point this morning? Ain't no grave gonna hold our bodies down. Brother, Jesus came and he was birthed in this world. Uh, the prophecies in the Old Testament prophesied of his coming. He came, he walked this earth, he lived like you and I. He went through this earth, he died, he suffered on the cross. They put him in an old grave, if you will, and, and and he stayed there for three days, but on that third day he got up and he arose. And he gives us promise today. He strengthens our faith to let us know, hey, it's been done. The Bible said it's going to be done and so will it be done. Amen. Amen. We may have lost the loved ones. We may have lost somebody short too brave. But folks, I'm saying today that they, they will be our loved ones that are saved and Christ will be delivered from that death. Amen. I got a I gotta move on with time. <laughs> the clock's rolling, right? I'm gonna look back at this because it's broke. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm, 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 let me look. See, let me see where I'm at. Let me see here. All right. Okay. Good. I am. I got to go. All right. Hold my children to be assured of eternal life. I mean, Titus 1 and 2, but it, it lays it out pretty heavy, doesn't it? I want my children to be assured of eternal life. Eternal life is not a wish. I mean, Jesus is not here coming to this earth playing Santa Claus, okay? No, sir. Eternal life is not a wish, but a hope founded upon the one who cannot lie. Brother, if it's in the Bible, if God said it, if the book, if the book says it, then we can count it. And everything in my life that I count on and I depend on is nothing of this world 
but everything about this book. It, all my hope, brother, everything in my life, if the Bible be wrong, I'll be damned. Because I do not trust in anything other in this life, in this world, more I trust in the Bible and the Word of God. Come on, somebody. But I believe in this book. I believe in this book. And I know uh, Titus 1 says God cannot lie. So, so it's going to be. For me, there is comfort in the proverb that if I choose right, and we're we'll get we'll getting there now. If I choose right, listen, the Scripture says my girls will be blessed. It has a lot to do with us. Well, that's what the book says, right? Being faithful, being upright, being obedient to the truths of the gospel, it indeed matters. I'm talking about my children. I'm talking about my children. If I want them to be blessed, there's things I need to do. And I'm talking about uh, my kids. If that's so important in my life, if, if I prioritize them in such a way as I'm claiming here today, well, it's very important what I do. Because the Proverbs lets me know that there's some things I need to do if I want my children to be blessed after me. For me, it is then of the highest courts for me to keep my integrity. Ladies and gentlemen, I must strive daily to live a holy life. For the sake of my family and my children. Our integrity may be the means in which by God saves our children. You know, if we, we claim to be saved, and, and, and let me just be I'm adamant about this, okay. there is none righteous, no, not one. We're all as filthy sinners. There's no hope within ourselves. Can I, can I say that in this church this morning? Can I, can I be truthful? Can, am I hitting it pretty, pretty accurate? I mean, we're all flawed. Come on, somebody. We all are. But I'm talking about this morning, those of us who have realized that, that what we are, as Paul did in the Bible, Paul said he was one, he was chief among sinners. Paul said he wasn't talking about that before his conversion experience. He was talking about that after he got right with God. Paul was a man who said those things that I know I should do, I don't do. Those things I don't do, I know I should be doing. So that tells me, hey, he was human too. He wasn't Jesus himself. But he worked hard at it, didn't he, brother? You go through and look at how many books in the New Testament he has written and left here recorded for us to read and have understanding today. I mean, uh, uh, he was about his integrity, though he was flawed. But so for it is for us, though we're flawed, though we'll come up short, though none of us can meet that standard in our life of, 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 of righteousness as it pertains as Jesus did, we are to be striving every day to try and emulate what Christ has already done. Because it's very important. It may be that our very children is watching our lives. And if they look at our lives and they see us as their parents and us failing so miserably, and by that I mean not even trying, uh, doing things that we shouldn't do, uh, being so flippant about it, pulling out our grace card and saying, well, I got my ins <laughs> insurance covered, and, and just at that, who knows? But I do know Proverbs chapter 20 verse 7 says that we'll do our part to strive every day to live a life of integrity. Our children will be blessed after us. Now ask about it. So here, I've got three points and I'm going to get out of here. Okay? That all right? Yeah. All right. So, every good, oh, excuse me, every Baptist preacher ought to have a few good points, right? Just a few. All right. So I want to just spin off of my topic here about blessings. I want to talk just here, just a few short things on being blessed. Number one, you want to be blessed. And you want blessings to fall after you. Realize God's in control of every situation. I mean, just start with that. Just say God's in control. Whatever you're going through. I mean, there'll be times with jubilation. Uh, uh, one, one of us here today might be jubilant about uh, the, the heat of the summer being here. Thank God the summer's here. You know, maybe one of us. 
And then when you go over here, some of us might be saying, well, thank God I was able to cool off and get in the house of the air conditioner last night through the summer. So it's a mindset, right? We can be thankful. Come on, somebody. In whatever state we're in, so, I mean, sometimes when we don't have anything to be rejoicing about, we can still rejoice. I mean, we can find something to, good to talk about and be thankful to the Lord for. Come on, somebody. Amen. Realize God is in control of every situation. Luke 6 and 20. I have several passages of Scripture through verse 23 if you want to go back um, sometime today and, and read them in context. But Luke 6 and 20 says, And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed be ye the poor. Now Jesus is not saying here to strive to be poor. That's not what he's saying. I mean, Jesus doesn't want us going around and saying, Oh, glory to God. Help me, Lord, be poor. Lord, I, I just take everything away from him. How ignorant would that be, right? He's not saying that. But he says here, uh, blessed be the poor. He's saying we are to have a right view of our circumstances. I, uh, I'm, uh, I'm one of those that's not of uh, strong monetary means. Okay? And uh, I have those around me right close that are. But I have no jealousies in my heart over it. I'm not upset of, of those around me who may be prospering financially better than I, you know. I look at my circumstances and I say to myself, you know, things could be a lot worse than what you are, old boy. You know? I mean, you, didn't you have a car that you were able to get over here to, to speak this morning? Uh, didn't you have air conditioning running in your house last night? I had too much to be thankful for. <laughs> To let those things that we don't have get me down. Come on, somebody. That's what the Bible's talking about. That's what he was talking about. Jesus was talking about to his disciples here. He said, have a right view of your circumstances. Hey, when it's out of our control, it's in God's control. When our finances aren't where they should be or we don't think they, we would like for them to be, God's still in control. Hey, when our health gets to a place when our health isn't what it used to be and, and maybe, uh, goodness, not, it, maybe it comes sometimes and, and our health sometimes comes and it doesn't ever recover. But even in our last days and our last moments, even if our body and our health is being deteriorated away, I mean, you don't know what it's like to you've been there and been around a saint who's laying on his back or her back in a hospital room or at a home or in a hospital somewhere or another knowing that their body is where it is and they still have a smile on their face and even lifting up their hands and praise to God and some even sing songs of His mercy and grace. Oh, glory! Who in the world, what are we doing here to be complaining about? I want to know today why is it that we can't find something good in our life to speak up of. And even when it's bad, you're still supposed to raise our hand and say, thank you, Lord, for your goodness and mercy in my life. Shouldn't even be here. If it wasn't for the Lord, the devil would have took me out a long time ago. I'm so thankful today for the blessings of God. So, how to be blessed? You realize God's in control in every situation. Number two, have the right attitude about people. And again, Luke 6, 31 through 35. I'll just read one verse because my time's running out. Have the right attitude about people. Have the right attitude. Now I'm just going to move right along trying to get to the end here. Jesus was saying we are to love them that don't love us. Brother, I mean, when you got neighbors around the house and they're kind of tough, we still love them. Now, I'm not saying if Jeffrey Donner lives beside us, we need to go next door, ring your doorbell, and ask him to come over and have lunch with us. I'm not saying that. Use some wisdom and discretion. But I'm saying pray for those people. Pray for them. Love them. They got a soul just like we do. Co workers. Some of us are challenged with people on our jobs around us co-workers. The jealousies and envies and covetousness and all of the mess that goes on in the workplace. We love them anyway. I tell you, I found out from experience, even those hardest ones, well, if you'll show love toward them and don't let it get to you and you keep your character, I've seen it come around from me where the whole situation's changed. That love's a powerful thing. Hope God forbid here you have some church folk. You got one sitting over there on the other side of the pew over there. And got one over here on this side. Bicking back and forth. Y'all don't have that here. And uh, hopefully you'll never have that. But uh, I've seen it. It's ugly. Love me anyway.
family members. Well, you ain't been done until you've been done by your family members. Love me anyway. Pray for me anyway. Don't give up. As long as there's breath, there's hope. I've got, I've got quit. Number three. Have the right attitude about our own issues. Luke 6, 41 through 42. You can read it when you get home. Jesus was reminding us before we get too judgmental of our brother, we need to check ourselves. Pride, the hypocrisy, is often more of a problem with self than it is someone else. I have to look in the mirror sometimes and realize I got to part some things and be honest with myself. See, we can be dishonest with everybody. They're with my time. I'm done. We can be dishonest with everybody. When you look at that man or that woman in the mirror, you can't be dishonest with that one. That one knows you. Let us be honest with ourselves. Will you stand? I asked of, uh, I've asked of my daddy, in the last moment of your life, what will matter most? And for me at the end, for me, it's going to be my children. If we will walk in our integrity, as Proverbs 20 and 7 explicitly conveys to us, if we will walk in, I believe it says, uh, uh, my integrity, uh, that's personal. If we'll walk in our own personal integrity, Proverbs tells us that after us, our children sh will be blessed. And if that's important to you, those, your children, your grandchildren, take this verse to heart and make sure we're doing just that. Our Heavenly Father,